Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. So this is a scene here, and this is the next part in the hashing, uh, cracking the hashes video. I hope you would have seen the first video. I released it some time back, like today itself. So in this part, we are going to discuss about uh, the different kinds of hashes they use it. Some common everyday uses of hashes. Then we would see how we can use Hashcat to crack the password hash that we found that we're gonna find on this website and we found it earlier in the previous as well. Third usage would be how we would be using online services for the same hash cracking. Like if you don't have it on your laptop or if you cannot run hash but on your laptop, you could use some of the online services. And how efficient would it be to use that or whether to use a hashcat. So we'll be discussing that comparison as well. In the previous video, I was talking about message digest and a few other things that we talked about were web crawlers and what is a user agent and I showed you what the user agent was for mine. And then robots.txt and how web crawlers respect that to whether you want to allow them to try and like crawl your website or not. For that, how use robots.txt is being used. And in the robots.txt, we found that there were two hidden folders and in one of them we found a backup file so that's where we found the hash and also like these are the initial findings so let's start with this first talking about message digest so it's basically a cryptographic hash function and hash function is basically uh, anything that you input into it it would give you output a fixed value of like a fixed fixed length string for that so let me just show the wikipedia page for that so it's any function that can be used to map data of arbitrary size to a fixed size value. Like whether you have a one like a one character file and you want a hash of that, or whether you have a 12 GB file and you want a hash of that, it would still be the same character length. Like if you're using MD5, then it would be 32 characters. And if you are using a different hash, it would be a different, but the size of the length for that particular hash algorithm that you have used, it would be the same. Some common hashing algorithms include MD5, SHA1, SHA256, SHA512. So let me show you just quickly how you could do MD5 on your terminal. So I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. So if you do echo A and you pass it to MD5 sum, so MD5 sum comes pre installed. You could see that there's this uh, hash if you use hello scene. So it does this hash for this, but even if you change a single character here, so the whole hash would change completely. Right? So that's like that. So one of the use cases you could easily identify that it's used to check the integrity of the things that's been there, right? Like if whether the file has been tampered with or not. So if I show you some of the use cases for this, uh, here is oh, uh -huh, I'm not sure whether it's oh yeah. So it's used for document integrity. So like I showed you, so instead of hello same, it could be a file, maybe uh, a binary or a OS image. So you, you might think that NSA has tampered with a file or someone has tampered with a file. So you could check the integrity because a lot of websites, like if you go to Tor website, so Tor project. So if you go to the download page of Tor, you would see that they have a signature as well. So download Tor browser. So you could see that there's a signature for this and uh, how to verify signature. So basically signature stands for the like the hash of that particular binary. Like this is the PGP signature of it. So once you download the binary, uh, you could verify the like you could calculate the signature locally and then you could verify whether the signature matches the binary or not. And that way you would be sure that OK, yeah, it's the same binary that I've downloaded and no one has tampered it while it was getting downloaded. So I can show you how you could do this. Let me know in the comment section if you want a video on that. So yeah, first thing is document integrity. And then second, storing passwords. So like in this website, we saw that there was this page where uh, it was asking for a password and then it was being compared with a like a hash value, right? So this password was being compared with the hash of it. So what happens is, and it's uh, like a good practice to do, is that not to store actual passwords that are the encrypted strings of it. So like if my password is hello Asim, so on the server they could be used if they're using MD5 sum. So they could be using this to um, like compare with it. So like once I enter to, pass to my password again, 
so they would compare my password with this hash instead of like plain storing it in plain text the reason being that even the they don't know what's your password is and if like maybe the database gets leaked or something happens other people cannot access their actual password or rather they would be stuck with the hashes which won't be any useful another thing generating unique ids yeah pseudo random number generation it's very important in cryptography like as random as it could be proof of work and all those things so the main part for here in this particular mission is storing passwords so that's relevant to us i would be adding all these links in the description yeah this is the pictorial representation of a hash function so here it could be md5 some or sha1 or anything and whatever message so message could be even a file the actual file or a text message or anything you want you could just input it and it would give the fixed length so you could see that hello seem was also the same fixed length as this and even simple a character was also the same length as the hello seem which was Ah uh, yeah, MD5, SHA2, KSD32. These are types of uh, hashes. Off track. I opened it because uh, so it was because uh, there's a thing called hash tables, and hash tables is basically pre-computed hashes for a lot of common words or strings or values. So off track was a password is a password cracking tool that's prominently used for cracking Windows passwords. So it cracks LM and LTM hashes using rainbow tables. So I'd used it earlier, like I don't know. I used it way back. It was very long time back. I used it. It's quite a good tool. Hashcat is what we are going to see first. So let's first identify the pieces of the puzzle. So we found the secret, and the secret we found this particular directory. And on this particular directory, we found admin dot bak dot php is leaking this hash value. Then we got this cryptic hash. file we don't know what this file is so we are just going to download this so i have already downloaded it here in this hashcat folder so i am just replace it so it's in my downloads folder so let's go to download hashcat so hashcat is basically so this folder is basically uh, once you download this binary from here you would get a dot 7z file and you once you extract it you would get this hashcat hyphen 6.1.1 directory so that's that so i'm here like so there's this file command in linux which helps you to know what kind of file this is this is so it's a 32 bit lsb executable and it's basically it's an executable file lsb is i think lower significant bit i think it's that i don't remember exactly So what you have to do is just this hash. There's some issue. I don't know. I couldn't run this file, but don't be like underwhelmed about that. We could still do some analysis on this. So there's this strings function. So what it does is it helps you to know what are the printable characters in a file. So on Linux, everything is file. Like if like if you connect your mobile or if you connect your mouse as well. So even that is also a file. and it's assigned a file descriptor and the input is read as a file so if you move your mouse pointer like left to right it's basically the coordinates on the like movement coordinates are being sent as a file descriptor and being read by the operating system like that and the file command helps us identify whatever that file is like even if i change this file to hash hash.png so even then it would still identify it as like a elf executable Let's change it back to hash dot png just for convenience purposes. So let's check the string stats here. So we are doing this so as to get an idea, a rough idea as to what this function is doing. The actual process could be that you want, you would want to decrypt it in maybe IDA or or R2 or any other like reverse engineering binary thing. But since we don't need to delve in a lot of those things, so we are just like getting a rough idea as to what this hash function is used for. We already know that we have to basically decrypt the hash anyway. So we see that there's md4.c, there's md4driver.c. So we get a rough idea that it has got something to do with md4. Let's read these things. So if you could see here. Uh, I think I read it somewhere here. 
uh, MD update, MD already done process 54, MD4 test suit results. So we can be pretty sure that it's a MD4 hash. Just to verify that, I have a tool here. And what was the hash? Let me try. So this hash ID is you could just install apt sorry, hash id. So you just need to do apt install hash id. If you don't have apt fast, you could just use apt iphone get or sys. apt would also work fine. So by default, Ubuntu doesn't have it, or Kali has it, so you could use it in Kali. For Ubuntu, you just need to run that installation command. So after analyzing this hash, it tells that it could be either of these hashes and it has identified it based on the length of this particular hash. So we by this and from the strings thing, we have a fair idea that okay, it's an MD4 hash. Now let's jump into hashcat. So where is this hashcat? So if you have extracted that hashcat locally after downloading it, you would get this these files in that. For Windows, you would use this hashcat.exe. For Linux, you would use this hashcat.bin. So let's check the options. So it has a lot of options and these are the types of hashes that it can be used to crack for. You could see there's MD4, hash modes, 900. So I'll be talking about this in a while. So hashcat, then you have to insert the options. So these are the options. Then you have to insert either of these, either a hash or a hash file or a hc capex file. So hc capex, if I remember, it's basically like if you are doing hashcat and you have maybe you have done run it for one hour and then you want to stop it. So that generates a hc capex file. So that you can resume it from there. I think it was that. Then dictionary mask or directory and dot dot dot. So this is. So the things that are in square brackets, those are optional, but the things that's there, those are compulsory. So without square brackets, it's the general convention. So first we need to enter the hash type. So we already found here in the hash type thing that it was MD4. So hyphen M, so what I'm going to do is hashcat, uh, hashcat dot bin hyphen M and 900 because 900 is for MD4. So in hash modes, so if you have MD5, you would use zero. If you had a SHA-1 crack, you would have to use 100. The next thing is attack mode. So this is also type num, you could see. Example is also given iPhone A3. So, so we are going to use this three because it's brute forcing thing. So if you go down, you could see the attack modes here. So where's the mode? Yeah, attack modes. And these are the numbering for the different kinds of attack modes. So zero is straight, one is combination, three is brute force, six is hybrid word list, seven is hybrid mask for word list. So there could be a dedicated tutorial for hashcat because it has a lot of options. But just to give a brief idea, we are using brute force because we don't know what kind of password it is, what value it is. But suppose if you knew your target and if you knew what kind of like values of password hash it could be like, if you know that it's a user's password and you have some basic idea of it or you have a word list from which you could crack that particular hash so you might prefer using this number six since we don't have any idea we are using plain brute force it would take a bit a lot of time than like word list attacks but i would suggest if you're using a word list attack you could go for rock you dot rock for you dot txt let's run this so if you have uh, like uh, maybe a GPU like I have NVIDIA so you could use CUDA processors for this but I haven't like I don't have this installed but if you have that it would be very fast you could see that status it's cracked and this is the value and this is the hash for it so if I do a echo hyphen in MD4 I'm not sure whether or probably I won't be able to calculate it let's calculate this online to verify whether it's the actual md4 decrypt encrypt so there's this website so let's encrypt it you could see that this is the value and this is the actual value that we are getting here yeah so that matches so that's how you use hashcat to crack it if you have a gpu maybe amd gpu or nvidia gpu you could install that 
particular CUDA toolkit or for NVIDIA and similar goes for GP, um, AMD also. So you could install that because that would help you fasten this process as uh, the GPUs have a lot more cores and thus a lot fast processing could be done on that. It was a simple thing, so it died very fast. But if you have a complex password, it would take a lot of time than this. It shows a lot of stats here. How many million hashes per second, 449.2 million hashes. And a lot of things being thrown in. Now let's move to what are the different online alternatives that you could have checked. So just go to MD4 uh, online track. So a few good websites that I know. MD5 Decrypted Crack Station is a good one. It has a very large word list. Encrypt Crack, GitHub.io, MD5 Garage for Hackers. This online hash crack is what worked for me this time. So if I just like enter this hash, select hash type if I use MD4, I am not a robot, and I choose this Fire Hydrants. Let's submit this. So you could use this to crack other kinds of hashes as well. Has already been sent. It has been found. Yeah. Because I used the password is this. So this was a hash and we used hashcat to do this as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I think. If you have any questions, Make sure you ping me or come on our Discord channel or oh, there's a Reddit as well so you could join the subreddit as well. If you like this video, press the thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and share this video so that uh, the reach of this channel increases. Thanks a lot everyone. Hope you had a good time. Uh, let me just submit this here for the sake of completion. Uh, where is it? Yeah. What was the value? Let me copy it from my hashtag. So yeah, submit. So you would get a different hash, so you would have to crack this. You have already completed mission. Yep. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Everyone.